I have received all this vintage goodness from Sharika in Brussels, who is Postal Love on Instagram. And she challenged me to create a junk journal with 31 hidden journaling spots, only using the supplies she sent. I am really nervous. Can I do it? I don't know. Why don't you join me to give me some moral support? Hi, this is Barbara from Vienna, Austria. In my last video, which you can find linked below in case you missed it, I unboxed all this vintage goodness sent to me by my friend Sharika in Brussels. I will link her Instagram below. I think in the meantime, she may have moved to the Netherlands already. So I have purchased from her Instagram account a few times in the past and I just love her vintage supplies. As far as I understand, she currently only offers her Patreon subscription boxes. You can check those out on her Instagram account if you're interested. But Sharika wanted to make it clear that she is not challenging me for marketing purposes. She just wants to see what I come up with. And she didn't even ask me to post a video about the challenge. But of course, I want to take you along hoping that you might find something inspiring in my process. So to recap, these are the rules of the junk journal challenge. I have two months to complete the challenge. I must use some of everything. So that means, for example, here we have these spirit labels. I need to use some of those or at least one of those. I don't have to use all of them. I must not use any of my raw materials with the exception of color, rubber stamps, tools, fabric, etc. I can do whatever I want with this cover, but I must keep the red and blue fabric untouched. So this cover is from Bangladesh, which is her home country. I think it's super cute. Everything else here are vintage treasures from Europe. And lastly, I must create a variety of 31 hidden journaling spots throughout the journal. So this sounds like a fun challenge, which is right up my alley, but I am nervous to get started. So thank you so much for your moral support. Out of all the larger papers, I have chosen these that I think are going to serve as the base of the pages for this journal. And I still have all of this left, but I picked at least one page of everything so that if I only use these, at least I will have used what I need to from here, but I can always add some of these here. Next, I need to decide on the size of the pages and that of course depends on the cover. I don't want to destroy this cover. I want to keep the shape. I like the square shape and obviously we have to keep this. I will be covering up this and I have already decided that I want her on the cover. She's just so adorable. And by the way, I have scanned some of the wonderful ephemera and I have links for those for you down below. One of them is a freebie but you can check all of those out below the spine obviously is not going to be wide enough so I am going to have to cut down the spine but first I want to get the signatures in order so knowing that this is the size I will go with I can now fold the papers or cut them into the size that I need I will start out by cutting off the spine so that I can use one of these as a template that just makes it easier for me so I'm just going to use my Stanley knife and carefully separate the spine from the cover. Fortunately, this is coming off, but I could paint over the whole thing or glue some pages over it. So in the end, we won't see that, it's okay.
I now have a total of 16 folded pages, which should give me plenty of space for 31 hidden journaling spots. So now I just need to put these together into signatures. And given that I have 16, I can easily divide them by four. So I can have four signatures with four folded pages each. And I'm putting them together so that there is a variety of different papers and colors in each signature and i have to say if it wasn't for this challenge i would have had a really hard time actually using some of these papers i would not have been able to tear some of these up i just love this doily it is so cute especially like these these old letters huge huge challenge for me to not just hoard these but that's the good thing about this challenge i am actually challenged to use them so thank you sharika this helps me get over my hoarding issue <laughs> or at least for this challenge also of course these ledger papers i mean they're amazing how can you not just hoard them also these invoices, oh wow, that, that was hard to tear as well. But yeah, what, what are you gonna do with them otherwise, right? It's like, yes, use them. So two more. That's a nice center. Okay, I miscalculated somewhere because I only have three papers left. <laughs> Let me see what I did. I don't know what I did. They all have four, there's three left. So I am going to add this encyclopedia page as well. and decide which one is the nicest for a center maybe this one or no let's take this one here with the pocket okay so that's four signatures let's see if they really fit in here yep that looks good and of course it's going to grow a lot still with all the stuff we're going to be adding. I just wonder if I should add more pages. I kind of feel like I want to add another signature. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. It just feels like it needs to be a little more bulky than this. So I'll just make another signature. So this is my fifth signature. Feels a bit better. Next, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew any pages where I want pockets. For example, this one here, I could just leave as a flap to open, but I think I want this to be a pocket. So I will sew here and here. And also, for example, these kind of pockets here. I'm just gonna sew here and here, etc. So I will go ahead and do all of that here as well. And the next thing I want to do is to repair any pages that already have some crucial tears in them. For example, like here, this would just keep tearing further. So I want to make sure to patch that up. And I'm just going to use another cutoff from one of the other pages and glue that right over. And I think it actually looks cute when it's patched up. It just adds more character. There. I actually think this journal already has so much character, although I haven't done much, but just the vintage paper on its own has so much character. And then the sewing, I think adds more and i mean this would just be an amazing journal to work in just like this <laughs> just 
trying to see if there's any other areas I need to patch up. Okay, that was actually the only one. Very good. The next thing I want to do is to add some pockets. So Sharika has sent me these pockets here and then there's these two vintage envelopes. These, by the way, are scanned as well if you want to check these out. But I have them in a smaller version so they can e easily be used as the ephemera. So I'm going to be taking the letters out. This one here is opened from the bottom. Doesn't really matter. So these are super easy pockets to just add as they are. These two are obviously too long, so we'll, I will have to figure something out with those. This one I'm going to tear down so I can make two pockets out of it. So one I can just sew or glue here, then add something here, and then cut it. This one I could then just sew together here. So I want a rough edge on this one. I'm going to take my tear ruler. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bit shorter and just tear that. And then from this magazine, we could take a part of this and put it over here because this is so brittle anyway that I can't use them as actual pages in my journal, but this is a good way of incorporating some of that here. On the back side of this page, we have these ladies, which I think are awesome. And I have scanned these as well, so I don't have to worry about cutting them up. So you can find all of those down below. So I just need to mark which area I want. I wanted to have some green in it since we have some green here and I do want to keep this. Then I'll just mark it. So then I just add it here. Then I will punch a half circle in that top layer. And I think I will leave, or won't I? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew down these two here and that will sew the pocket up halfway, but you can still open this top part a little more. I could of course sew all the way to the top, but I don't wanna make the pocket narrower than it has to be. And this is the upper part of the pocket. So it's basically just a sleeve right now. I want to shorten this one as well. Then I'm going to again make a half circle. Maybe this is better for the front. Actually, I want this on the top. And I will sew around all the way here. So here are the two pockets. So we have this one here. And we have this one here that has a shallow pocket here. And then a regular pocket up here that opens really wide. And with this one here, I'm going to do something similar. So I'm going to get two pockets out of this. This one I'm going to sew just on the bottom to keep it nice and wide. And this one, I don't need to do anything actually. <laughs> this one I will just leave as it is because it's already closed on the bottom. And then we have these two envelopes. One thing I do want to do because they are so brittle already and if we use them as pockets, they're going to get more wear and tear here and you see it's already tearing. So I want to strengthen that from the inside. So I'm going to use one of these cutoffs from the ledger paper I used for my signature and I'm just going to cut off a piece the size of the envelope and then glue it on the inside of that top flap. And I'll do that for both. If you're interested in seeing the other two challenges from the two previous years that Sharika had given me, you can find those linked below as well. 
One was very similar to this one, except I didn't have the extra challenge of creating 31 hidden tuck spots. So it was just about making the journal itself with all the beautiful ephemera that Sharika sent me. So this time <laughs> she made the challenge a little trickier because she thought, well, she did that one. So we need to find a new challenge. I, I really like this one with the hidden journaling spots because that's something I do anyway. So that was two years ago. And the other one was, uh, I'm not worried about the back hair because I'm going to glue this on anyway. And the other challenge was making 50 tags. Yes, 50, 5 oh, with the ephemera that she had sent only using her ephemera. And that one was really fun as well. I have two or three three videos with that i'm not sure anyway you will find those links below as well i just love these challenges and of course i have the bonus of <laughs> receiving all this amazing ephemera i am spoiled yeah I, I just have to keep saying that because i am really really spoiled with supplies okay so those are both strengthened now so that means i have six pockets I only have five signatures, so I will have to divide them somehow. The first one will go on this page. I think that will make the page a lot nicer. And I am careful to not glue it all the way to my crease here, otherwise the page won't fold well. This one I'm going to glue here. I think the greens go together really well. So that's pocket number two. I'm now in my second signature and I'm going to add this one to serve as a double pocket. So I've only put glue on the three sides here, leaving this one here open. And of course we have the pocket here from the top. I think these colors provide a really fun contrast. This is now a side loading pocket as well. I'm now in the third signature and I'm going to put this second envelope on this side. And I again want this to be a double pocket. So it's a pocket from the left and it's also a pocket from the top because I only glued the three sides down. In my fourth signature, I'm adding this one. This is again a double pocket. So this of course has a pocket from the top and we have one from the side here. And finally, I'm adding this cute pocket to my very last page of my last signature. I'm gluing the whole thing down since I already have one, two pockets here anyway. And I chose this one not only because I think it's nice to have something on the last page and also because this is a very sturdy ledger paper which can hold such a bulky pocket well. So I'm hoping that by seeing my process of how I go about putting together a journal and all the different stages I go through, that will help you start making a journal if you've been struggling and you didn't know where to actually start. And I think it's always nice to have a limited supply. So to pick a few papers and ephemera pieces beforehand so that first of all, you know what kind of style you're going for. And second of all, to not get overwhelmed with the possibilities that you have. Then we also have these fun triangular shaped cigarette pockets. They are very flimsy, as you can see, so I would definitely have to strengthen that. The first thing that comes to my mind is to make a corner tuck spot, but of course it's too big. So I could either just cut it down like this, or I can even just cut half and then just turn it... Wait, half? <laughs> yeah, to just cut half here and then here and then to have that as a corner tuck spot. Let me try that. I'm going to tear rather than cutting. So first I'll tear this part off. And then I will tear it in half. So that gives me a cute tuck spot. And actually by having it folded double like this, I think it will hold up. So I think I'm going to sew these, but I'm not going to sew them onto the page directly. I'm just going to 
sew around these and then we'll glue it on pages so that we don't have to sew through to the other side. So I will do that with these and I'll do the same thing with one more so that I have four. So these are my four tuck spots ready to be added to the journal. And then I decided to take one of these two strips, tear it lengthwise in half and make two ruffles out of them by just folding. Let me show you how I do that. I'll just show you with the bigger piece. So I just fold them like this and I kind of do this at the sewing machine. I'll have a few just to get the foot on top and then I'll, I'll set the, the foot down and I'll very slowly start sewing and as I sew I will keep making the folds and move the foot farther down. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe we'll use these, maybe not, but they are here. <laughs> As I was gluing this, I made the mistake of also gluing this side. I have wiped it away, but it still seems a little bit sticky. I want to make sure that it really doesn't stick onto this page. So one simple way to avoid that is to use a piece of a candle and just rub that along where you have the glue and then there's no way it will stick. And this way we still have the children looking out from the pocket. I think that's cute. The second one will be turned the other way. So the cool thing is you can turn them either this way or this way. And this one I will turn this way. I'm now at the end of the third signature, so of course I'm trying to distribute these quite evenly as well. And I totally don't mind that the cigarettes is upside down, actually I think that has some charm. And this last one goes towards the end of the last signature, right here. already getting a tiny bit bulkier. <laughs> now it's time to start adding some of the smaller ephemera. And maybe we can try to add some hidden journaling spots using these. For example, on this page here, we have some green here. We have these green stamps here and we could just attach this like this so that we can still flip it up for some hidden journaling space. Just have to decide what to do with this. Do I just fold it up? I could just do that. Mm, that could be an idea. I just fold it up like this. And then I could glue these two down and then that could be another secret journaling spot into which we can just stick something. I like that idea. And then I think I'm going to run across it with my sewing machine, but then glue it on since I don't want the stitching to show here on the front because I don't know yet what I'm going to be doing on that page. So this way it looks like we have it stitched on. I'm just thinking, I want some of these numbers showing so I will actually not center this. So it looks like it's stitched on, but of course it's not. And if you like the effect, but don't want to sew, then you could of course use a marker to just draw your zigzag stitch or just a straight stitch. And here I'm almost at the end of the journal and I have this one and I can do the similar thing except this time we'll do it the other way around. We'll make the fold on the top and glue it down. And so this way, when we attach it up here, we could put something underneath and we can also stick something in this pocket here. And this time I'm just going to glue this on. Like that. 
This one here I'd like to make into a pocket. So I'm going to make a half circle in the middle on the bottom here. And then I'm going to glue this in on three sides so that we still have this peeking through when this flap is closed. We have this cute little invoice. I'm going to tear that in half. Not easy to do. And I'm going to glue this one here. Again, going to make an opening. So this is going to be a pocket. And then I'm going to glue this one on top so that we can still open it. So I have to make some kind of a hinge here. And to make that hinge, I can use one of these ticket strips that were also in the package. Going to fold it lengthwise in half and then add glue on the outside. Add one to one side and the other to the other side. Just making sure it's the way I want it. actually cut the pocket a little more narrow. I don't want it peeking out too much, otherwise it's not hidden. <laughs> and then we can glue down the pocket on the three sides. So we have a hidden journaling spot here and we have one here once we add a paper inside. Then I have this German invoice from a brewery from a place called Grüne Baum, which is green tree. <laughs> Since the paper is quite fragile, I'm going to glue it together. This, unfortunately, I will have to take off because it's just going to be too flimsy to keep. I would be afraid that that would tear with time. So I'm going to glue this together. We are again putting a half circle here and gluing that down on the three sides. I also want to put something on this page. We have this postcard and it's a little bit too long, you see, for the page. But instead of just cutting it off, I think I will go with the idea that it's going to be too long. And I'm going to have it sticking out a little bit, but I don't just want to have a straight edge here. I'm going to use my envelope punch board to make a tab. I'm just going to punch here on one side. And then I'll see how long do I want the tab to be. Not super long, maybe here. Then I just draw lines from the tab. And this is where I cut. Oh, I'm cutting a bit of the <laughs> tip of the building off. It, it's church, obviously. So, yeah, I'm sorry. And this way we have a cute tab here. And this is completely not what I wanted. <laughs> what I wanted to do, that's why I, I was surprised that I was cutting this off. Because in my mind, I had envisioned making the tab on this side. <laughs> Why would I put it here? <laughs> really, when you're on camera, you do the weirdest things that you would never do if you would not be on camera. It is really a phenomenon. I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> Hi, Louisa, in case you're watching. <laughs> I know it happens to Louisa, and I'm sure it happens to many other YouTube creators. really cracks me up okay so change of plans <laughs> it's gonna be a pocket like this and i am actually going to stitch around it before i glue it down 
I'm back to the first page of my journal and what's bothering me here is you see this end of the page is curling up just a little bit because that's where the paper was folded and I don't like that. Don't have a lot of space here, but I want to try to just, I'd love to tear it, but I'm afraid it's not gonna be enough to tear. I would have had to do that before this flap was on it. So I'm going to have to try to cut it. That's better now, I have a smooth edge here. And I would like this first page to have a nice picture on it. And I just love, love, love this postcard. This is also one of the scanned images as well as this gorgeous postcard. So this, this, and this one here, these three ladies are scanned in the links below. So this one will go here as a tuck spot. Just thinking, yeah, I definitely want it on this side because I don't want to lose these numbers. And I am going to first sew on this. And since this is quite a heavy postcard, I want to make sure it really is adhered well to the page. So I will just clamp that down until it is adhered. Let's do a flip through of how far we have come. Tuck spot here. Flip up here with a secret pocket. Love this page, it's so cute. Pocket here. <laughs> Pocket here. Pocket here. Tuck spot here. Pocket here and here. Tuck spot here, tuck spot here, glued together pages here, <laughs> there we go, this here flips out as well, tuck spot here, pocket here, Pocket here and here. Pockets here and here. Tuck spot here. Another pocket here with a side tuck spot as well. Pocket here. A flap here with a pocket here and some journaling space there. Super cute doily. <laughs> pocket here. Flap here with a pocket here. Tuck spot here. Tuck spot here, flip up with secret pocket here, and finally a pocket here and here. I hope you join me for the next episode in which we are going to finish decorating all these signatures as well as figuring out what to do with this cover. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.